that's why we've all taken time out of our days here today to help raise awareness. I am a I, like, it has been something for the last like, year that I've been like, cause I, but I come from such a big family, I'm one of six kids, uh-huh. so every time I pose the kind of idea of, like, even though I'm just like a vegetarian, my mum was like, it's going to be difficult to cater that as well as like your other brothers and sisters, so I've always kind of put it off, because obviously it's what you know, so it's what's easier, and if you don't make yourself aware, and if you're quite ignorant. Do you know what happens to male chicks in the egg industry? No, what happens? So basically, because the males are of no use, this is on their first day of life, they go down a conveyor belt, and the, the females are deep beaked as you're seeing here, and they're sent off um, to be hens, laying hens like their moms were, and because the um, males are of no use, they go into that grinder that you just saw on the first day of life. Yeah, it's something that's it's quite powerful stuff, yeah. What do you think about that? That's fucking horrendous. That's also something that I didn't know as well. Yeah. I heard about the um, females being, like, getting their beats taken off, but I wasn't, like, fully aware. Like, I hadn't, I hadn't like, gone out of my way to go, So and, like, they get their beats off so they can't eat each other or something? Yeah, so Because they're kept in such cramped yeah. conditions, yeah. yeah. I think in, in nature they'd be fine. It's because they're so confined. Yeah. You know, if, if they, you put the four of us in a, a small elevator space and that expected us to live our lives, yeah. we'd probably start pecking each other too. You know, yeah. it's like. <laughs> Have you guys ever met a chicken? I love a farm. Okay, and yeah, I volunteer in an animal sanctuary. Yeah, it's not, it's not a slaughter farm. We can keep them, like raise them to keep them. Uh huh. Love them and play with them. <laughs> so, so what's the purpose of the animals then? On your farm? Okay, so is it a sanctuary? No, it's a children's play farm, but they don't slaughter their any of the animals. They keep them and then. Oh, okay. Which they die. So they, they live out their natural yeah. lives. Then. Okay. okay. Yeah, I've got chickens at home. They're, they're phenomenally intelligent creatures, aren't they? I was going to say, uh, at the sanctuary I work at, I'll walk around the enclosure and they'll follow me. And they're just oh, really yeah, inquisitive. And Yeah, I think we've documented like 38 different unique calls that chickens can do. And I think when you think about these intelligent animals being put in these conditions, it's kind of hard to reconcile. Feathers have completely fallen off. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, it's a good question. I think it's very clever the way the industry has marketed these products. Uh, free, this, this is free range. So it's the same conditions, they've just removed the cages. This is free range, this is organic, all those clever labels, humane. The sad thing is these are, you know, for me, is that these are just broken animals. What do you guys think about all that? It's awesome. Yeah. The good news is we can all do something about it. That's why we, we've all decided to come here today. So it's not, you're not all vegetarians, are you? We're all vegan. Oh, you're a vegan, okay. So that means we don't eat anything from the animal yeah. or, or anything that comes from them because of this. How, how do you feel about what's been your experience with veganism? I've got a lot of friends with vegans. Yeah. I've got quite a lot of friends with vegetarians. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the dairy industry? I love cows, so yeah. I don't eat meat because I love cows, but 
Yeah, yeah, I, guess, I guess the thing that shocked me is, you know, cows can normally live 25 years, whereas in these conditions they um, typically live five to six years until they're, they're spent, you know, basically to the point where they can't walk anymore, and then they're sent to the same slaughterhouses that the beef cows are sent to. And uh, the thing that really hit home with me is um, the male offspring in the dairy industry because they're of no use, um, similar to what you saw with the chicks. They're oftentimes killed in the first day of life. But yeah, that's why, for me, I just, it was quite, at first you feel intense, you experience this raw emotion that all this stuff is going on. The good news is when you decide not to support it anymore, that weight is lifted and you can feel a, a sense of liberation from it all. So, yeah. Does this got make you guys think we can step away from the screens if you'd like? You don't have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's been it's been a thought that's been on my head for a long. I'm so anything about being in the side probably, and like probably more dining things as well. Like probably haven't uh -huh. turned around and like done anything about it. And especially with videos like that, like they do come up. Especially with things like Facebook, like, they do come up on the news feed like all the time. And it's just that choice, like, it's either not knowing, then knowing, then, so yeah. But, and I think that's probably the case with a lot of people as well. Yeah. But they, in their heads, it's like, oh, it's what I know is me. I'm just being a bit about it. I'm just carrying on doing what I do. Yeah. Out of, like, pure ease, rather than making themselves uncomfortable and then making it wrong. I think that's a great way to put it. I think when we're all conditioned this way, it's really hard to think of doing it a different way. Um, the good news is we can just give these things a try. I, I know for me, once I started to try it and realized how easy it was, it was easy I think to make it. Everyone just thinks how life is so difficult because you can't eat, like especially like vegan, especially like I think vegetarian would be quite easy to do. Like personally, I don't eat that much meat, but vegan is like the fact that like butter and milk and stuff like stuff that's in my everyday diet, I think would be quite hard. But then at the same time. I think, oh wait, but there's different kinds of butter that aren't dairy butter and like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's That's a great point. I think that when you start to look into it, I know for me, I used to eat a very bland diet. You know, tortilla chips, smothered with cheese, sour cream, yeah. chili sauce. Now, I eat just the whole, the whole rainbow of, you know, loads of different things, I kind of pressure. I friend the other day, we yeah. saying how... So we went up to like our, our uni cafe and we were like, the vegetarian options are so much nicer than meat options. Because as soon as you have something say like beef or like lamb, you're completely limited with what you can almost flavor with that. And then you have something that's like vegetarian, you can have like chickpeas, potatoes, carrots, fucking everything in like one big pot and it works. So it's definitely something I'm considering having to take for a while. Oh, it sounds like you're, you guys are, you know, I can tell you all have good hearts, honestly, and I think it's just a matter of following, following that. I'm, yeah. I'm always up to trying it, like, I did it for four months or something when I was at uni last year, I attempted to be vegan, and I, th I think I, like, slipped up a few times, but I did well. Yeah. And I think it's not about being perfect, it's about doing what we can. It's a matter of reaching for the almond milk, the cashew milk, the rice milk, instead of yeah. the cow's milk. Yeah. It's making yeah, those yeah. small changes um, that make a big difference. So there's a program called Challenge 22, which basically you sign up and you get emails and support. And there's a Facebook group as well, and you're assigned a mentor. Um, and you basically try veganism for 22 days, and after that, it's up to you to decide where you go. Is that a program you guys might be interested in? Yeah, probably something that I'd more, I'd, if, if I started it, I'd probably be able to do it myself. Yeah, if you guys have your phones, you could give it a try now and start it together. I don't have the 3G on my phone. Uh huh. I'll look into it. Okay, I can give you some cards. How about yourself? I'll take a card. Yeah. yeah okay, sounds good. Because I think uh, it's just having that support. The really cool thing is you guys can choose to do this together and support yeah. each other. Oh, did you hear? I just had this the other day. It was so cool. And, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for stopping, guys. There's loads of resources on there, basically everything you need. I hope you don't get shouted at a lot today. You are doing a good thing. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Take care. So that was the interview. In my opinion, they were in the contemplation phase, meaning they've considered some of the issues around animal agriculture, but don't necessarily um, see a reason to act. So I focused on reiterating the ethical considerations, 
um, and also starting to kind of um, help them get ready for that next stage and, and, and what they can kind of do to, to respond to the issues. If you think the chat was effective, let me know in the comments below. Um, if there's some strategies you uh, think that were particularly effective, um, let me know that too and maybe some things that I could work on. So really appreciate any feedback you have. Do you want to miss out on the next video? I didn't think so. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you next time. So, um, sorry about that.